What is up guys, Jarv here, back today jumping into Destiny. We are back with another This Week in Destiny, giving you all the heads up on everything that you can expect for the up and coming week. This week is week 11 of Season of the Serith. We have the finale quest for Season 19 and a brand new activity. We've got a full breakdown of all the weekly rituals, the Dare's loot, the Lost Sector rotation, and of course what Tess has available for Bright Dust this week. There's a lot to get through, so be sure to stick around and enjoy the video. If you do enjoy the video, be sure to leave a comment and rate down below and remember to subscribe for more destiny 2 content just over 60 percent of the viewers on the channel aren't currently subscribed so make sure to hit that red button and ring that bell to ensure you don't miss an update but without further delay guys let's jump into the video now another week and another this week in destiny this is week 11 of season 19 and we are very much on the final push before lightfall launches on the 28th so much so we have the finale event kicking off this week so during the final two weeks of season of the serif there'll be a special finale quest and activity that will be available to all players season pass owners who have already completed the more than the weapon quest will start the finale quest automatically upon logging in so if you own the season pass and you aren't fully up to date with the seasonal story then make sure to do that before tuesday's weekly reset to ensure you can jump straight into the finale. Now, by completing this mission and activity, it's likely we'll finish a triumph which will unlock the spirit of the Warmind. This is an absolutely epic looking exotic ship and the final piece to the cosmetic puzzle that we've been slowly unlocking throughout the course of the season. The final quest is looking like an absolute juicer, so make sure that you don't miss out and jump in on Tuesday's weekly reset. Now, from here, we're going to jump into the King's Fall Raid Challenge and this week we'll see the Devious Thievery Challenge in rotation. This takes place over at the War Priest Encounter, and players must steal the brand of the Initiate within a couple of seconds of taking the Brand Claimer buff. This is certainly one of the trickier ones in the King's Fall Raid, and comes down to very clear communication and excellent timing. If you and your team can pull it off, there's an extra harrowed raid chest waiting for you, as well as an additional pinnacle reward. Now moving on to the featured raid and dungeon content for week 11, the Last Wish raid returns to rotation. Now as the featured raid, all the challenges will be available. Perfect if you're still working on that Rivensbane seal. And on top of that, as the featured raid, it means the final boss is farmable. You can earn as many keys as you like from Riven, max out your infantry and postmaster, and then hand them all in at the end, to increase your chances of getting a 1000 voices exotic fusion rifle with some big changes coming in lightfall it's definitely a weapon you want to make sure that you have so this week could be your best chance if you don't have it already now to partner last wish we see the shattered throne return as the featured dungeon and was the first dungeon experience in destiny 2. now much like the last wish raid if you can defeat dol in karu who is the final boss she'll also grant an additional pinnacle reward which is perfect if you're still finding yourself on the power grind and still need those last few power levels now from here we're going to move on to dares of eternity and this 30th anniversary pack activity and this week we see the lightkin armor set return first introduced in season of the splicer is partnered by the scatterhorn armor set which launched back in forsaken these can drop during the course of the activity when you complete it or by handing in strange coins and opening paracausal halls over at the star horse in the treasure hoard now to partner season of the splicer armor we also have season of the splicer weapons this week's is the chroma rush auto rifle the ignition code grenade launcher the grid skipper pulse rifle the farewell sidearm the sojourner's tail shotgun the shattered cypher machine gun the main ingredient fusion rifle, the long shadow sniper rifle, the last dance sidearm, the toil and trouble shotgun, the wishbringer shotgun, and also the last perdition pulse rifle. Now some of these splicer weapons are still well worth having. Zer has even brought some nice ignition codes on the weekend, but if you're still looking for the absolute god roll, then this week would be the week to jump back into dares. Now from here we're going to move on to the weekly rituals and the glassway returns as a nightfall and grandmaster nightfall in season 19. This will also be your first and last opportunity at getting a DFA adept which is exclusive to the grandmaster difficulty. Now as this is the only chance we have to get our hands on this weapon there's also bonus rewards all week long. 
to whether you're chasing the DFA or you're looking to max out all your end game upgrade materials, this is a fantastic week to jump into Nightfalls and Grandmaster Nightfalls upon this week's weekly reset. Now to go alongside those over in the Crucible, we also see Mayhem Return. So once again, if you're looking for a more casual Crucible game mode after a sweaty weekend in Trials, then feel free to jump into Mayhem for an easy pinnacle reward. But speaking of Trials over Osiris, this weekend we'll see Capture Zone return alongside Freelance. Now we've never seen Freelance available in consecutive weeks, so this could be a notification error on Bungie's part, but if it isn't, then be sure to make the most of it. But let me know your thoughts on that down in the comments below. Now next up we're going to move on to the Lost Sectors for week 11 as there are no seasonal challenges left for season 19. On Tuesday we'll be heading over to the Bunker E15 over on Europa with a chance at getting some exotic boots. As for Wednesday we'll be returning to Concealed Void giving you a chance at another pair of gauntlets. On Thursday we'll be heading to Perdition, this time though offering exotic chess pieces. As for Friday, we'll be returning to Savathun's Throne World and Sepulchre, which will be offering up exotic helmets. On Saturday, Extraction will be in rotation, giving you enough a chance of exotic boots. As for Sunday, we'll be heading over to the Dreaming City and the Chamber of Starlight, giving you another chance of exotic gauntlets. And to round out the week, we'll be heading over to Affiliates Rest, and these will be offering exotic chess pieces. These are perfect chances now to fill out your collection ahead of Lightfall, especially if you're missing some of the exotics exclusively available from the Lost Sector rotation. So be sure to plan your week accordingly. And if you want to check out this calendar for yourself, then be sure to head over to Today in Destiny, and I'll leave the link to that down in the video description below. Now from here, we're going to move on to one of the most important parts of the week, and that's what Tess has available for Bright Dust in week 11 of Season of the Serith. Now over in the Bright Dust featured shelf, we have a legendary emote called Rolling Rulebook. This is brand new for this season. So if you fancy picking this one up, this will set you back 700 Bright Dust this week. Next up, we have an exotic ghost shell called Redline. Now this was back from Season of the Splicer. So if you missed out on this one, this will set you back 2,850 Bright Dust. That's alongside a legendary transmat effect called Diato Capsule. Now this is from Season of Arrival. So again, if you are collecting, this will set you back 450 Bright Dust this week. As for the shader this week, we have a Boreal Char, an absolutely awesome legendary shader, one of my personal favorites. If you like the look of the color scheme that you see here on my Warlock, then make sure to pick this one up and this will set you back 300 Bright Dust this week. Now over in the main Bright Dust store, we have an exotic emote called Trailing Pyrotechnics. Now this is from Season of the Hunt. So if you missed out on this one, then be sure to pick it up and this will set you back 3,250 Bright Dust. That's alongside a rare emote from Season of the Serith called Wall Sneak, and this will set you back 400 Bright Dust this week. Next, we have an exotic sparrow called Open Sky Tora. Now, this is from Season of the Haunted, so if you missed out on this one, this will set you back 2,500 Bright Dust. Now, next up, we have Legendary Armor Ornaments, and these are for the Arc 3.0 set. For your Warlocks, you have the Arc Light Robes. For you Titans, you have the Thunderous Impact Plate. And for you Hunter, you have the Dynamo Current Vest. The chess pieces are available on all three classes, and each one will set you back 1,200 Bright Dust this week. Now, alongside Legendary Ornaments, we also have new Exotic Ones, once again available for each class. For your Warlocks, you have the Endothermia. For your Osmiomancy Gloves. For your Titan, you have Merin's Odyssey. For your Doom Marchers. And for your Hunters, you have the 8000er. For your Frosties. These are all brand new for Season 19, and each one will set you back 1,500 Bright Dust this week. Now, the penultimate item on offer is a ghost projection called the Tetrahedron. Now, this was launched in Season of Arrivals and will set you back 1,500 Bright Dust this week. And the final item on offer is the Solar Astrolabe Exotic Weapon Ornament for the TQ's Divination. Now, much like a lot of the items this week, this is brand new for Season 19 and will set you back 1,250 Bright Dust this week. So there we have it guys, a good look on everything that you can expect for week 11 of Season of the Serif. If you've enjoyed this video, then be sure to check out one of the two videos you see here in these cards for more Destiny 2 content. And if you want to keep up to date with everything to do with Destiny 2, then be sure to hit subscribe as well. I'm going to jump back into the game as always guys, and I will catch you all again very soon.